Hi everyone, Harvey here. Just wanted to go over some of the uh, Rosemary Ainsley matters that I wanted to discuss. We'll um, we'll take a look at their circuit here. This is basically the same timer that Rosemary Ainsley had in her document. However. I've made some changes. These are the proposed changes. I've moved the discharge pin to the anode right here. However, I have kept the 50k pots for the adjustments. I have kept the 0 0.0033 microfarad capacitor for the timing. I've removed the capacitor that was going to the discharge pin. I, I have no idea why that was ever there. Anybody that's used these 555s would recognize that that is not a natural place to have a capacitor on these timer circuits. Everything else is pretty straightforward for a SPICE model. I've selected 125 microhenries for the inductance and I've selected an internal capacitance of 0 0.0125 nanofarads because that gives me the timing waveform that I was trying to get point to do for us. Uh, 0.99. At any rate, uh, this is what gave me what I was looking for. I wanted to share that with everybody. Now we're particularly interested in the effect that we're going to see when the drain is negative relative to ground and also negative relative to 24 volts DC simultaneously. We will see a negative current flowing through the R negative sense but we're also going to see a negative current flowing through the inductor and a negative current flowing back through the R sense to the 24 volts DC. That's counterintuitive considering that 24 volts DC is positive relative to the drain at that point in time. So we'll take a look at the simulation. We'll go ahead and raise the 24 volts DC. Before I do that, uh, let me show you real quick how I set up the drain to be the the reference. Real simple. I have a drain net list name. I have the spice reference net name as drain. That takes my voltages and makes my voltages relative to that point. The currents however are relative to the parts themselves. So when we're looking at the current for R plus sense, we're looking at the current through the device. Same thing with the inductor and the R minus sense. So back to the simulation. We're going to select some voltages here that make the analysis meaningful to us and same thing with our inductor current. We'll take a look at that because that's um, that's important. Okay, and we want to spread that out so we can see what we're really looking at. This is the first pulse, not an even timing. I'm looking for an even timing between the charge and the discharge of the inductor. That's what I spec to 0.99, and that's what we see here. We have a relatively even timing between the charge of the inductor and the discharge of the inductor. Now, mind you, the off time for our MOSFET comes all the way to the next on time, so it's all the way over here. But for the actual inductor discharge, it's getting completely discharged by this point right here. So what's really happening here? We've got a positive voltage right here during the charge of the inductor. This is where our MOSFET is turned on. We've got a positive current flowing through the inductor. And we see that relative to our drain, the source pin is below the drain by a, a small amount. If we look at, pull up the source, we can see if we've got five volts per division here we're a little less than a volt right there below the drain. So that's pretty much on with a little bit of resistance through the two ohms internal to the, to the MOSFET. But immediately upon turning that off we get this huge spike relative to the drain. It's a negative going spike 
relative to the drain, but if you were to look at that relative to ground, it would be a very positive going spike. However, on the, on the backswing of that, as that spike comes up and crosses zero, we notice that our source becomes positive relative to the drain. And this is because the body diode is in conduction at this point. So starting right here, the body diode is in conduction. We've got a negative current at that point. Notice we've got uh, 7.5 amps negative spike in this particular arrangement going through that body diode. But at that same time, our power supply is positive relative to the drain. So we've got both signals are positive relative to the drain. So you would expect the current through our our our, uh, our R plus sense to be going the opposite direction. But it's not. It's it's also going in the same way. We can see that if we enlarge that current we can see that it too is going in a negative direction. And it follows the exact same current path so all three of the currents through R sense plus, R sense minus, and the inductor, all three of those currents are running in the same direction even though both of these voltages are positive relative to our drain. And that's one of the things I wanted to show. Um, also, it, it's noteworthy to see that right here when the body diode turns off, uh, we're in a situation here where our current essentially drops to zero. This is two, 2.5 amps up here. We've got a little bit of ripple right there, but there's very little current activity, you know, by comparison, even though we've got these huge voltage swings. So all through this ringing period, we've got no current. What about power? Are we dissipating any power in the inductor if there's no current flowing? Well, we have the inductor power here. We can look at it and we can see. Now, this spike right here is a 5 kilowatt spike. So down here, we're at about, uh, if that's 2.5 kilowatts, you know, you're almost a kilowatt on the negative spike. But by the time that body diode turns off, there's no more power being dissipated in the inductor. So the, the power is a flat line until we actually get that spike transition. That's where our power is being dissipated in the inductor. And that's interesting considering we have this nice slope. Now I know where that power is going. I'm going to let you guys think about that. I also want to show you that after this condition exists for several cycles, then we get a reduced timing, we get a smaller negative spike, it, it resets itself to some extent, and then it's back on to uh, the same events over again. I think that was all I wanted to show um, at, this, at this juncture. There's some other things that we'll show in the in the next videos with some of the other values and, and resistances. But uh, for now, I I think that was just about it. I think you probably noticed that with these values that I've selected, uh, you know, I'm getting well over uh, well over 900 volt negative spike. Let's see, uh, we'll set this at 500. And we'll set this one at 500. We'll turn off our power and shrink this down where we can see some of them. And we don't need that fuzzing up the works. So, there we go. 
thousand kilovolts that's our spikes on uh, on that drain with this configuration well that's it for now thanks for watching